Hey, I'm Brandon, and today we are checking out the HJC i20 helmet coming in around 215 bucks. This has a polycarb shell made construction. It is DOT only, three shell sizes, three pounds, four ounces in a size large. A lot going on with this helmet, but one of the best benefits and one of the you know main features of this helmet is that the chin bar can easily be removed from the helmet. You've got these red tabs on the side, press those down and just pull this right out of place. Now, one thing to note on that, and now you got your three quarter helmet, pretty nifty there. One thing to note about the chin bar though, this is not designed you know, to provide you with impact protection. This is a hard kind of TPU style plastic. You can open and close these vents on the inside, which is nifty, but this really is just to block debris, block bugs from hitting you in the teeth or, you know, getting some extra protein while you're out there on the road. So it is really just serving as that type of protection. It's not gonna protect you uh, in the event of impact. So that is certainly worth noting here, but I like the versatility. It's very easy to pop back into place and pop it out of place as you wish to do so. And we've seen this kind of style from a few other manufacturers out there, right? I think a lot of people like this overall styling to it. I think it looks really sharp. I think HJC is one of the better options when you're looking at the versatility and this kind of, uh, you know, being able to remove the chin bar. I won't name all the other manufacturers out there, but I'm sure most of us are familiar and have seen it before. And I think HJC is executing this overall style pretty well. So as I mentioned, polycarb, DOT, three shell sizes. You've got an extra small to small in one shell, the medium to large in another shell, and that third and final shell is going to be the XL to 2XL. Three pounds, four ounces, and that is going to be in a size large. So really not bad in the overall weight considering. And again, chin bar, not for impact protection, but overall very straightforward. As we take a closer look at the front, I mentioned it briefly, but you can open and close these vents if you wish to do so. We've got some air intakes towards the top of the helmet as well, but there aren't any exhaust vents at the rear. I think that would have certainly been beneficial to kind of have that, you know, pull that airflow through the helmet. That's what we like to see, creating that Venturi effect, allowing that hot air to escape the rear. But knowing this is more or less a three quarter helmet with a little bit of uh, chin protection here, most people will probably get plenty of airflow moving through this uh, for through this particular helmet, especially knowing the spacing that you have right here at the front. Now the shield itself, two big tabs here to grab that. It seats very well with this chin bar here. It's got like this little recessed area with the gasket surrounding it. So it seats pretty well against that chin bar. One thing you will notice if you're used to wearing full face helmets, um, the field of vision is very short vertically. So keep that in mind. You know, you don't have this really large vertical field of vision that you might get with something that's a bit more sport oriented. You know, something you use at the track when you're tucked in on the bike and you want to be able to see as much as you can. So that is something that I immediately notice with these style helmets is that the field of vision is a little bit different and a little bit restricted compared to some of the other options that I've used in the past. But let's work our way to the interior. Intermediate oval internal shape, and it's gonna be nice and snug right at the cheeks. So keep that in mind. It is going to relax, it is going to break in. Make sure that it's snug right out of the box because it, again, it is gonna relax for you. So just expect to get that chipmunk cheek type of effect. But I'm gonna go ahead and press this red tab here, lift that shield real quick, and just get this out of the way. It'll just make it a little bit easier as I'm pulling out the interior liner here. And you can see how simple that is. And then we've got a very straightforward interior liner here. You can take everything out and you can see that little bit of Velcro. That was that sharp sound when I pulled that out. Little popper reflectivity there, but everything of course is removable. It is washable so you can keep everything nice and clean because if you're like me, if you ride for any prolonged amount of time, you generally start building a little bit of sweat on the interior liner here. So it is nice being able to pull these out. This one's giving me a bit of a pain here. Bet you that it's that Velcro. Wrestle it out of here. There we go. Then we got that snap. Take that out. And then the headliner right here. But again, as I was mentioning, you know, you can build a little bit of sweat. So it's nice to be able to take out this liner, wash things up, keep everything nice and fresh. I highly recommend it. If you've worn your helmet for any prolonged amount of time and you haven't washed the interior liner, do yourself a favor. It's going to be very nice <laughs> when you wash it and put it back in. You'll probably be disgusted about 
how much grime kind of comes out of your interior liner. So highly recommend washing on a regular basis. This is also set up to accommodate their HJC smart system. You can kind of see this little piece of plastic right here, two Allen bolts, take that out. And that's actually where the battery is going to go for that HJC smart system. And then you've got some recessed areas for the wiring as well that's incorporated in here. You do not have to have the HJC smart system. Um, you can see the speaker pockets right here. You can throw in your own proprietary Bluetooth communication system if you wish to do so. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, but they do have some of that recessed wiring for that smart system in particular. The channels aren't very good on the inside. We've certainly seen better when it comes to the EPS channels and getting that airflow through. And as I mentioned, they don't really have any exhaust vents on this particular helmet. So certainly think that's something that could be upgraded here. But at 215 bucks, considering this overall style and people who are utilizing this particular helmet, it's a bit more on the style side of the spectrum versus, you know, top tier performance or anything like that. So I think a lot of riders who like this overall style might be out there on a scooter, riding in the summer, riding in the city. This could be a great option for those riders to take a closer look at. Of course, if you have any additional questions though, click that info button. That's going to take you over to the product page. You can take a closer look at this in detail. And as always, we do have our customer service team on standby, ready to talk about motorcycle gear. They're all riders, more than happy to get you pointed in the right direction. Thanks for hanging out with us for a bit, taking a closer look at the HJC i20 helmet. I'm Brandon. Keep it pinned.